मैं तो डेली यार डेली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन In the news tonight, Lands Minister disputes petition claims. COVID-19 misinformation rife, says Wangai Nabete. And later on, Fiji plays host to Israeli president. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Lands Minister Shanil Sadaka has today claimed that some landowners from Singatoka have claimed they were told to sign on blank papers, which was added to the petition by some. This follows claims made in a petition by Sadelpa MP Viliaminga Voka earlier this week, which called for a holistic review by the Standing Committee on Natural Resources on the proposed mining project at the Singatoka River. This was rejected by the Speaker of Parliament, Ratue Peli Nailatikau, which led to opposition MPs staying away from Parliament for two days. Sudakar says the recent petition and pictures being circulated was sending out a wrong message. The minister also revealing issues raised by some of the landowners regarding the petition. We have received some calls in the office by some landowners in the area saying that they were asked to sign on a blank paper. They, I'm trying to get some written confirmation from that as well. They, they never knew that it was about this one. They were told it's about some dredging activity. And they signed on a blank paper and it was put in the petition. That's what they're telling us. There's no blank forms with, with, uh, with Sojalpa. We're very careful. We're very careful that um, we don't do anything that is not in keeping with the laws of parliament. Sodaiko says that no mining license has been given to magma mines to undertake any work at the mouth of the Singatoka River. And magma mines has got an exploration license. That's what they're doing. And every three months, every quarter, we're going to we, our teams are going out. The, the environment team, the Ministry of Environment, we're going out and checking everything. So there's no question of any disturbance. The pictures they're circulating and the petition that they're, they're running is, is based on some old pictures. It might be it might be in the same area, but it's not nothing to do with this mining activity. He adds that a full environmental study has been undertaken. The Ministry of Environment conducted their own EIE, Environment Assessment. The companies, companies, consultants have done the EMP, Environment Management Plan, which is submitted to us. In addition to that, they have deposited some money with us uh, as compensation. If there any damage is done, there will be compensation paid. But at, at this point in time, we have no reports of any sort of disturbance to the uh, to the site. The minister has told FBC News that a license will only be granted if 60% of landowners agree to the proposal. Chosa Yerunuga, FBC News. The health minister says the spread of misinformation on coronavirus in the country is spreading faster than the virus itself. The minister called out opposition MP Linda Tambui in particular for having played a major role in spreading misinformation and politicizing the issue. Koroi Tandulala with the details. The health minister lashed out at opposition whip in parliament this morning, saying that she has no medical background and should refrain from meddling in the affairs of medical professionals who are ensuring Fiji remains safe from the COVID virus. He said Tambuya in her petition on Facebook had said the virus spreads through trade winds. Honorable Tambuya is not a doctor. She is not an expert. She's a keyboard warrior who doesn't hesitate to give away her platform to any causes, no matter how deceitful, which gets enough likes to gain her attention. She recently endorsed a petition regarding the establishment of Navos Hospital's isolation ward. Honorable Speaker, the petition claims that trade wounds, trade wounds, could spread the virus throughout the entire nation. Mr. Speaker, this is absurd. This is not an airborne disease. Tambuya then raised the point of order where she claimed the minister was misleading parliament. The Honourable Minister is again misleading the House. There's absolutely nowhere in my petition on my page that I've ever mentioned the trade winds he's talking about. Please show that to me or in the House, otherwise withdraw your statement. Waganabete says the health professionals were putting their lives at risk to ensure that Fijians were protected not only in the current period but also during the measles outbreak. Honourable Speaker, many of our health staff, many, many, I'm passionate today because they are my colleagues, maybe not yours, but they are mine. Many of our health staff have been on the front line protecting our people throughout the measles outbreak, working night and day, seven days a week, without respite since November last year. The minister then took a swipe at the opposition for having 
did not play their role during the measles outbreak and when Nabua was declared ground zero. During that time, we went and visited Nabua. The Honorable Speaker came and visited Nabua. Did I, I did not see any opposition member come to Nabua Hospital. Let alone Roy Nandoy. No, not really come The Health Minister has urged Fijians not to believe anything they read or hear about on social media but to get their information from credible sources. Koreitandulala, FBC News. Sadalpa opposition MPs return to parliament. Leader of opposition Sitiveni Rambuka says his members return to the house today, having received word from the Speaker of Parliament, Ratue Peli Nailatikao. I would ask for an audience with the Speaker, uh, for me, uh, to go and speak directly to the Speaker. We communi he communicated back this morning that... Uh, that request was not allowed and we accept that he has the prerogative he has the right to either accept or disallow a uh, direct delegation uh, visit but so we've accepted that and that's why we're back in the house on the issue of the absence of the nfp members rambuka says he is unaware of their reasons because of their own uh, i think for their own reason you'll uh, get that from them uh, maybe some of their petitions or motions were disallowed and that's probably why they're not in there. And when asked about whether the opposition ranks should be paid for boycotting the parliament sitting? We are in the house. We are in the house. We're not in the chamber. We're still working. Whatever we do up here or we do in the, in the chamber, it's parliamentary work. Meanwhile, in a statement, the NFP members say they are waiting a response to their correspondence from the Speaker of the House regarding two of their motions. The motion to note the contents of the review report on the Fiji Intelligence Unit 2017 annual report was passed unanimously in Parliament today. And with the majority of both sides present in the chamber after two days, the banter and raucous debate ensued with the Speaker of the House having to make several interventions to keep his house in order. Maggie Boyle with the story. You can hear it from there, you can hear it from the radio, but if you weren't present in it, The problem is you don't have any money. <laughs> Intellectual progress no longer exists because the absence sometimes of many actually uplifts the quality of a particular forum. It was almost a full house and after more than 24 hours without an opposition, they were back with a vengeance. Give it capacity. They, they are holding, they're sitting in an office in the Reserve Bank. And they come under the Reserve Bank. They deserve a, a better office of, the, of their own. Money lending to the Honorable Speaker is where people are surrendering their card and their pin to the money lenders. That is where, that is where the, the vulnerability lies, and that is where FIU would come in. Government were ready no, to respond. The Reserve Bank, of course, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, has a number of other checks and balances in, in respect of the banking system. FIU actually plays a very pivotal role in respect of the, the, the intelligence gathering and also the intel, intelligence dissemination. That they so have analyzed 650 uh, suspicious transactions in 2017 as compared to 383 transactions in 2014. And that clearly shows that the work they do, and therefore there is no need for a separate office. I just don't get it. The review report itself highlighted the critical work of the FIU. FIU received and analyzed 650 species transactions report amongst the 11 million or more financial transactions report. Of the seven recommendations in the review report, there are calls to expedite the review of the Real Estate Licensing Act. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. A review carried out on the open merit recruitment system has made positive impacts to the civil service sector. Attorney General Ayasaid Kayum says the recruitment and the selection processes are now faster. He says the service delivery and the introduction of new ideas have also improved at all levels. Responding to Sidelpa MP Rote Mumukepa's question whether a consultation was carried out, Said Kayum said unionists were made aware of this. Before the OMRS was actually implemented, we had invited trade unions. In fact, we were part of the process. Uh, they attended some meetings, some meetings they did not attend. So they were given equal opportunity to come and make their, make their views known, at least the trade unions were. Thank you. Up ahead, Minister calls for collective action. And World War II veteran laid to rest. Details after the break. Nadang bawa prosa negara saya, 
Gor kraki. Lo talave ono varo na Radio Fiji One. Nando mo ibiti. Radio Fiji One. Nando mo ibiti. Israeli President Reuven Rivlin has arrived in the country for his one-day official visit as he will be participating in the Pacific Islands Leaders' Summit, the first ever to be held with the State of Israel. The president got straight down to business after arriving in the country this morning, holding bilateral talks with Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama. Details with Philippe Naikaso. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama says Fiji and Israel have no qualms in using their voices in big ways to drive global conversations. Fiji and Israel have young, dynamic populations. Our youth know the value of innovative, uh, entrepreneurial thinking, and they are the potential of partnership to generate uh, prosperity. Today, my discussions with President uh, Rivlin centered around empowering these future leaders to strengthen the, t uh, the ties that uh, connect our societies and build a partnership that serves our people for generations. The Israeli government and its people have over the years assisted the Pacific, especially Fiji, in disaster relief, medical care and airport security. And today the president reaffirmed their commitment. I'm proud to announce today the establishment of 100 new scholarship for students every year of agricultural from the Pacific Island to train at the Arabah College in Israel starting in August 2020. Ben Marama also opened the doors to Israeli students who are willing to study in Fiji, especially in the areas of ocean protection, climate action, and cultural preservation. As I mentioned during our meeting, Mr. President, any sustainably minded Israeli students are welcome to study in Fiji and place themselves on the front lines of our world leading pursuit of ocean protection, climate action and cultural preservation. President Rivlin will leave for Australia tomorrow. The last visit of an Israeli president to Fiji was in 1986. Philip Enai FBC News. Minister for Women Mariseni Vuniwanga says that it's time for all to work together in the fight in the prevention of violence against women. Vuniwanga says the five-year national action plan will start this year to help Fiji better deal with the growing problem of violence against women, particularly at the hands of their partners. She says the plan will look at different areas to help fight this social issue, which saw 10 women lose their lives last year due to domestic violence. It will not happen overnight. But the time for change is here and now. It is time to further our collective action, and that takes all of us working at the same time towards the same goal, following one process. I am hopeful and dedicated. I am optimistic that we may arrive much sooner than we expect to our desired destination, gender equality. Opposition MP Linda Tambuya this morning says she will not be disclosing her source on a claim she has made about online viewing of pornography in the country. Tambuya has said the highest viewing time for pornography in Fiji is on Sunday morning and it's mostly the male population. She had claimed her information was sourced from a local telecommunication company to which at least three prominent communication companies refute. Vodafone Fiji says they treat its customer confidentiality with utmost priority and do not condone any breach or leakage of consumer information. Telecom and Digicel have also uttered the same, saying they do not track their customers' browsing data as it is against their policy. The three companies say they also don't release customers' information to a third party. Fiji's last surviving veteran of World War II has died. Private Chalem Bainisika, at 105 years old, was the only living soldier to have fought against Japanese forces in Malaya, the Solomon Islands, and Bougainville. Sainiani Boiler reports Bainisika was also the first Rara level villager to live more than a century. Soldiers, ex servicemen, friends, and families gathered in Rara level village Televu to pay their respects to 4565 Private Chalem Bainisika. Very disciplined. He was a very disciplined person who always loves to take care of himself, especially his health. He always chooses the right ways in life. 
laid private by Nisikawa's Fiji's last living link to the heroism and courage shown by soldiers who fought in the World War II in Malaya and the Solomons. He was also part of the war effort in Bougainville in 1944. Banisika was one of the 30 soldiers who volunteered to be part of the 1st Commander Unit to work with the American Army to spy on enemy during World War II in the Solomons. Private Mbainisika was in fact one of the first Fijians to be deployed as part of the Fiji Commandos, a special party of 23 guerrillas tasked to spy on the enemy and report to senior officers. Late Private Mbainisika was laid to rest in his traditional burial site here in Raralevu, Tailevu. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. And it's business time now with Koroi. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up after the break... AG clarifies Wangavuka financing establishment. And in growing Fiji, unit trust to expand into regional markets. Stay with us. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. The Wangavuka Financing Limited has been established to act as a third party on behalf of Fiji Airways as per the requirement of the European Export Credit Agency. The credit office office to finance domestic companies, international export operations and other activities. Civil Aviation Minister Ayasad Kayum says the special purpose company acts as a security if any time Fiji Airways falls behind in repaying its loan. Kelly Vidala reports. Setting the record straight in Parliament over claims that Attorney General and the Prime Minister hold shares in Wangavuka Financing Limited, the opposition were urged to stop spreading misinformation. I do not know what uh, sort of song and dance the opposition is making about it. So special purpose company was actually set up to hold the title of the aircraft, to hold the title of the aircraft whilst the loan is being repaid. The shares, the ownership of the special purpose uh, company is held by a security agent acting on behalf of the ECA, the Export Credit Agency, and the consortium of banks. The minister says the support from the Export Credit Agency is important as without it the interest rate payable by Fiji Airways would be higher. Fiji Airways on a monthly basis when they do the loan repayments it comes into the company. The company then simply disburses the repayment amount to the banks. And that's the arrangement. When the loan is paid off, the special purpose company, the ownership of course will go to Fiji Airways and the ownership of the aircraft will go to Fiji Airways. Wangavuka Financing Limited was established in the 1990s when the then Air Pacific purchased the Boeing 737, Kelly Vadala, FPC News. Sanifa from HFC Bank joins us with the latest from the money market. The Japanese yen traded near a nine-month low versus the dollar today as risk appetite improved on expectations that China will continue to take steps to offset the economic impact of coronavirus outbreak. Meanwhile, the Chinese yuan held steady against the dollar in offshore trade before a widely expected cut in the country's benchmark loan prime rate later today. China, Australia's largest trading partner, is expected to cut its benchmark lending rate after the central bank lowered the interest rate on medium-term loans earlier this week. Closer to home, Australia's unemployment rate jumped 5.3%, more than expected in January from nine-month lows, knocking the local currency to an 11-year low and bolstering expectations of further monetary policy stimulus. Data showed 13,500 net new jobs were created in January, beating forecasts of 10,000. That's all for now from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The Fijian week dollars weakened against five major currencies except the Australian dollar and the Japanese yen. Now commodities were on the rise again. Crude oil increased closing at $53.55 per barrel. Gold rose to $1,609 per ounce. And silver also rose closing up at $18.35 per ounce. The Unit Trust of Fiji, which has become one of the major investment institutions, is expanding into the regional markets. 
Economy Minister Ayaz Said Kayum says their reputation in managing the funds well and the creativity used in offering the product has attracted some regional countries. He says the unit trust of Fiji has the potential to expand to other Pacific Island countries for larger sums of investment. The partners include currently, there's an investment by the Samoan National Provident Fund. They've invested about a little over $8 million in UTOF. The Unit Trust of Samoa has invested about $7.5 million. The Samoa Parliamentary Pension Scheme has invested uh, about $800,000. And the Vanuatu National Provident Fund has invested about $5 million in the Unit Trust of Fiji. That's it from Business Tonight. Jamie Johnson now with the latest from sports. Thanks, Koroi, and good evening in Sports Tonight. And more exciting news for FBC Sports Channel viewers. Find out more after the break. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Sevens forward Suliano Volivoli is the new player named in the final 14 member Fiji Airways men's sevens side for the Los Angeles and Vancouver Sevens. Head coach Gareth Baber says Volivoli's consistent work ethic and attitude to training has impressed him. Baber adds Volivoli's got a maturity about his game and loves to work. The Fiji Airways uh, Fijian Latui side is expecting a good contest from the China Lions in its first match of the 2020 Global Rapid Rugby Competition. Currently in camp in Nandi, the players have been pushed to their limits under the hot and humid conditions. Felipe Naikaso has more. Eyes on the prize. The Fiji and Latui side have been hitting the training block well ahead of time as they aim to start the global rapid rugby season with a bang. It's going to be tough the first game. It's, it's, only, it's, it's uh, Shanghai. It's, it's a Chinese name, but uh, it's mainly play, uh, the players are all uh, Bay of Plenty players in New Zealand. And uh, that's why they, they are allowed to come into the country, because uh, they are busy in New Zealand. With a side featuring a number of new players and also a few senior players, coach Servakola is adamant that come game day, the side will be well prepared. It's a big learning. It's a big learning. It's bigger than the, than Rua. Uh, there's uh, 10 games we have to play and uh, there's a final. And uh, uh, Dua, we were just traveling around Australia. Mm. He's traveling internationally into Malaysia, into Hong Kong, New Zealand, and uh, Australia. The players also know that they will need to work hard to get into the starting lineup. The main focus is on our team, our build up for the new season, and uh, working on our uh, training and uh, new techniques. It uh, depends on our training. The Latui will take on the Shanghai Lions on the 14th of next month in Suva. Philip and I, Kaso, FBC Sports. The good news keeps coming for FBC TV and FBC Sports viewers. This after the South Pacific's biggest media company, the Fijian Broadcasting Corporation, announced it will be airing a number of major sporting events live and exclusive in the next few months. FBC is a service provider, basically. So I think uh, we are providing a service to the, the whole country by, by giving them all these different sports that we are getting on the channel and it's all for free. Local sporting events will not be left out as for the first time FBC Sports will be airing the Suva Zone 1 Athletics Meet live next week. For our athletes, you know, at times they are not recognized at the uh, Coca-Cola levels. Uh, we have a lot of uh, so-called uh, coaches around. You know, that are right for some athletes to represent uh, them in the other various events. They might not show during the Coca Cola games. With this on board, with you on board, let me see. As I said, I'm very much appreciative with this. The Suva Zone 1 will be held at the ANZ Stadium in Suva next Thursday. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. The Suva Bowling Club is gearing up for another exciting season with the National Muni Chanda Triples Tournament to be held this weekend. Serving as one of the longest bowling tournaments in the country, the bowlers will be out to prove themselves against the best this Saturday. Tale Materkula has more.
The two-day tournament will feature a total of 10 teams comprising of some of the best bowlers. The competition has been running here for many decades and there will be bowlers from all over Fiji coming to play in the tournament. Philip Lacey is urging the public to come out in numbers to support the bowlers as they vie for the prestigious trophy. Anyone who's in Suva this weekend who wants to come down and enjoy the facilities of the Suva Bowling Club and have a look at some great bowlers in action, please come on down and have a look. Veteran bowler and Suva Bowling Club president Samuel Latuiki Lingana says support is vital for the growth of the sport. This uh, relationship with uh, Coca-Cola will continue in the future and that we can uh, try and build up this minority sport mode and uh, try and uh, get the game of balls to uh, another standard in the future. This will be the venue where more than 30 bowlers will battle for the prestigious Munichan Trophy this Saturday and Sunday. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. The Fiji Amateur Boxing Association will be using the upcoming International Amateur Boxing Association 2020 Oceania Forum to iron out some of the issues plaguing it. With a shortage of accredited boxing coaches and officials in Fiji, the forum will be an ideal platform to discuss solutions with their regional counterparts. Vinina Rakautonga reports. The Fiji Amateur Boxing is aiming to take the sport to another level and they are seeking support from the international body. Uh, we're hopeful that uh, you know, with this new IBA, uh, you know, this, with the direction that IBA is taking now, that we'll be able to uh, address some of these issues, uh, also the, in the areas of development, referee and judges and coaches. Um, you know, we've had uh, probably the lowest number of any region in terms of, you know, accredited coaches and referee and judges. So these are some of the things that we want to raise. The association development chair says there are plans in place to improve the level of competition. Now that we have what we call our, our home, which is this high performance center, we plan to stage regular uh, 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 events and obviously uh, by improving the, 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 the the quality of our, of our, our uh, athletes, the quality of our, our judging and refereeing. The International Amateur Boxing Association 2020 Oceania Forum will be hosted at the Intercontinental Fiji Resort and Spa, where 16 national boxing federations will be present. Venina Rakautonga, FBC Sports. Ratukandabulevu and Queen Victoria Schools will be featuring in the Fiji Secondary Schools Cricket Competition this year. Cricket Fiji Chief Executive Alex Conrote says they are excited with the return of the Tailevu schools. Conrote adds Maris Brothers High School and Ratuskuna Memorial School will also feature two teams, while John Wesley College are dubbed the favorites for the competition. Uh, it's been a few years since we've had a proper secondary schools competition. Uh, our plan was to start it this year and just see how big it will get. We were targeting initially six schools. Uh, but like you said, we got the, resp uh, the response was overwhelming. Uh, so we have on paper about four schools. Uh, that includes schools from the west. Um, and more exciting is that we've got RKS and QBS back uh, uh, in the mix. Italian club Atalanta's fairy tale Champions League debut campaign looks set to continue into the quarterfinals. This after they thumped Valencia 4-1 to take a commanding lead into the second leg of the last 16 tie. To the English Premier League and Kevin De Bruyne set up one goal and scored another as Manchester City easily saw off West Ham 2-0 in their first game since being banned from European competition for two years by UEFA. The side is now four points clear of third place Leicester but even this win leaves them a, distance, a distant second to leaders Liverpool who are 22 points clear with 12 games remaining. A lone goal has Tottenham facing a huge task to keep their Champions League hopes alive after a 1-0 defeat at home by the highly impressive RB Leipzig. That's it from Sports Tonight. Uh, later on, Apanisa joins you with weather and in the weird and wonderful segment, a German woman dubbed the Lego Grandma makes wheelchair ramps out of Legos. That's coming up.
My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi and Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. In new media tonight, the WD Black P10 is the first in a series of game drives that WD announced earlier this month, but you don't need to be a gamer to appreciate it. And we join up in East now with the latest in weather. Well, generally, fine conditions prevail over most parts of the country today. Looking at the west, a hot sunny day, they shower in uh, places at night. Eastwards from Pekaba to Suva, similar sunny and uh, pleasant conditions throughout uh, the day. Up north, sun and uh, some clouds with a couple of showers. At sea, moderate to fresh southeast winds, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, the next low tide is at 11.04 tonight, followed by high tide at 11.09 tomorrow morning. Sunrise is at 6.02. For tomorrow, some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, mainly fine weather conditions elsewhere. Tomorrow, temps will uh, remain in the low 30s. And uh, looking further on to Saturday, fine weather to continue. And that's the weather, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Apinisa. In Fiji and Pulse, we asked, should lawyers caught duping their clients have their practicing license suspended? Yes, their license should be suspended. Yes, I think, I think so. They should be absolutely be suspended. I'm not saying, I'm sure, if they could uh, cut out their license to run a, a law firm. Legal practitioners who continue to practice this unethical behavior need to be taken to task as government advocate against corruption. The government have been consistent with its effort to eliminate corruption and abuse of power. Because it's very unethical. The clients, they work very hard to come and pay for the fees and everything. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, you may think these Lego wheelchair ramps in Germany were built by helpful kids doing a school project, but they're actually constructed by a woman dubbed Lego Grandma. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Lands Minister disputes petition claims. COVID-19 misinformation rife, says Wanga Nabete, and Fiji plays host to Israeli president. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking... Should politicians who spread fake news be prosecuted? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, the more clouds you have in your sky, the more colorful the sunset will be. The picture taken at the Nandi International Airport by Apakuki Koroi. And you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj, by Facebook page FBC News, our Twitter page at FBC underscore news, or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Toka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.